What the hell was that? Okay, so we've all seen the videos, we've heard the stories, we've seen the devastation that these wildfires have brought to Hawaii, have brought to Maui. So what we're gonna talk about today is possible causes, some of the conspiracy theories. So we're gonna put on our tinfoil hats and discuss what the hell happened over there. So we've seen the video of the man showing outside of his house where a power line was down and it looks like a fire started. So it could have been started by high winds and down power lines. But videos like that are not stopping people from speculating on other possibilities. Could it have been the government, could it have been aliens, space lasers. It could have been Oprah, Bill Gates and all those guys. What I want to talk about first is the land grab. Because I talked about in my last video, the vultures were swooping in. Ashes of human remains still on the ground. A thousand people still missing, unaccounted for. Yet billionaires, billionaire corporations, rich people from all over the place coming in saying, Hey, let me buy your property for pennies on a dollar. You're down and out. You can't eat. You still have to pay a mortgage on this pile of ashes over here. So let me relieve you. I know it was worth $900,000 last week, but this week I'll give you 50 grand for it. So there's a massive land grab over there and these people are doing despicable acts by trying to take advantage of these people in their weakest, most low moments of their lives. So Hawaii has some of the most beautiful landscape in the world. You look at the island of Maui, it's just spectacular, but this land is scarce, scarce resources, Beautiful landscape, high value property. So everybody wants a piece of it. You have these native Hawaiians who've been there forever. Maybe their communities don't look the best. Maybe their houses are old, out of code, not the prettiest looking. So these billionaires, these big corporations are like, look, you guys are sitting on prime, beautiful real estate and we need y'all to get the hell out. I don't care if your family has been here for a thousand years. I don't care if you're native Hawaiian I need your property because there's not much of it to go around on this island. So we need your property so we can make some money off of it. So people are saying maybe these corporations, maybe Oprah and Bill Gates, them has something to do with it. Maybe they were completely okay with raising Lahana to the ground and crushing Maui and displacing all these people. And one of the biggest pushbacks you get about this is, oh, that would be horrible. That would be a completely despicable act. That would be pure evil to do that. Well, we've seen it other places. Look at what's happening in Ukraine right now. Have y'all heard of the city of Bakhmut? So the United States, these billionaires, millionaires, warmonger, neocons over here, and these neolibs, they hype these Ukrainians up. And now Ukraine is in ruins. They sent hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians to their deaths, displaced millions of Ukrainians. And now we got companies like BlackRock, Vanguard, and others swooping in. Like, look, once Russia finishes destroying this place, once all the cities are burned to the ground, we're right here. So we're going to use federal money to enrich ourselves and to build this place back up. So let's go ahead and end the war. Y'all killed enough of them. So let's go ahead and end this so we can start developing this land in the way that we see fit. They don't care that hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are dead. They don't care that graveyards are still being dug all over the place. They don't care that all these teenagers and young men were living their lives minding their own business, and now they're in body bags. So if they have to kill 100 people, 200 people, displace 1,000 other people in Maui, if it can enrich them, I'm not going to say that's out of the realm of possibilities. I'm not going to say, oh, these people are too righteous and all of that to not do something like that because looking at recent history, it is absolutely possible. So I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> and one thing that they like to do with this place is create a smart city so we've had these conferences recently where they're talking about digital technology and cities how we can use it and smart tech and all that to make lives and city better make smart cities make 15 minute cities and all that they have had these conferences in hawaii the idea of smart cities gives guys like klaus Schwab wet dreams because some bitches like him would love to do this because in a smart city what happens is people have 
limited access to transportation because they won't, most people are really all people, all normies, not rich people, but all normies. They want us to give up our private transportation. We don't need cars. We can all go around on foot or on trains or something like that while they go around in private jets. So if you can compress a city, get people off of these big ranches, all of these big farms, put them in a little small area, have them walk to the grocery store, to the doctor, to work and everywhere like that. Have them take the train or a city bus. That's going to do great things for the climate, <laughs> according to these leftist nuts. So is it possible that these cabals, like the World Economic Forum, where these guys think that they are gods and better than everyday citizens, is it possible that they were raised to the to the ground? I don't know. I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put something as despicable as this past an organization of people who think they are gods. They're thinking, well, we can get rid of a few people, but it's going to be for the greater good. So if you think about George Bush and all those neocons back in the early 2000s with 9-11, a lot of people are still saying to this day that the U.S. government was behind 9-11. So did the U.S. government, did the powers that be, Killed 3,000 people so they can start a war. A war that took thousands of more American lives. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not going to be like these mainstream media outlets always talking about, well, they falsely claim, falsely claim. They always try to say everybody else is lying, making up conspiracies and doing all that. But they hold the gospel truth. They know everything. Anybody who says something opposite of what they say is a liar, is a conspiracy theorist. So I'm actually going to consider these theories and consider the possibility and if we have hard evidence to say that it didn't happen okay for example the whole thing about the space lasers there was one image of this red beam looked like it was shooting down from the sky but uh, apparently a couple of years ago this was from a spacex rocket and it seems like we have hard evidence that that indeed was if you go to spacex twitter you can see that very image there was put there about five years ago. So it probably wasn't that. And that image I showed at the beginning of the video, apparently this is from satellites from several months ago. These videos came out earlier this year, but nobody really paid attention to it. So we have these green laser streaks coming from the sky. So people are saying, wait, we have lasers coming from the sky. Is this China, this Russia, are we being attacked? And my question about this is, <laughs> what are you getting out of attacking Maui? What are you getting out of attacking Hawaii? Like in a military sense, what's the point of that? But there could be a point to it because if the U.S. government is behind this, usually when you test cutting edge technology, weapons of mass destruction like that, you want to do it in an isolated area. Like with the nukes, they were in New Mexico. They were in some of the Pacific Islands in the middle of nowhere doing their testing because they didn't want the destruction to go overboard beyond what they expected and to spread and destroy you more people. So if you have space lasers and you need to test it out in the city to see how destructive it can be, Maui could be a good target because you have a small island isolated and if this fire breaks out more rapidly than you expect it to, it's just gonna stop at the ocean. It can raise the entire island, but it's not gonna go any further than that. Versus if you do it on mainland USA, now you got something that can get completely out of control. So it's possible Maybe the government used space lasers against its own people. Maybe China or Russia did it. <laughs> if China or Russia did it, now we're in World War III territory. So I don't know about that, but <laughs> it could have been a test of a weapon of mass destruction. But these videos that we're seeing, they're old. We don't have any evidence of that. And then we saw this one video of that hut looking structure completely ablaze and this beam shooting from it looks like that was doctored photoshop so yeah uh, so the whole dew and space laser thing i'm not completely sure and another thing that people talked about was why are some of these other houses still in the heck why are some trees still standing so you go through certain areas you see cars complete in complete ruins houses are nothing but piles of ashes and then you'll see a bunch of trees still intact as if nothing happened and then certain areas certain parts of neighborhoods house is still intact nothing wrong with them at all so people are saying it seems like somebody did this on purpose they targeted the lower income the middle class areas and the high income people 
they kept that stuff intact because it could have been part of the smart city thing. It could have been part of the land grab. So one of the counter arguments against this is large trees usually contain a lot of moisture. So it's harder for them to set fire like that, especially a fire that goes through too rapidly. So if it's a smaller tree, some twigs, a bush or something, yeah, they'll burn. But the large trees, they're just too big to burn. But if the fire was so hot that it was completely destroying cars like that, it should have probably done more damage to the trees. But I'm not an expert on that, so <laughs> I don't really know. So I was reading that when you have these wildfires, you have these kindles that go in the air and they'll go away from the fire. Then they'll land somewhere else and then start a second fire at that spot. So that's why you can have big gaps. You can have a place in complete ashes. You can have another block of houses that looks like it's intact. Then you get to another spot, more ashes. So that can explain why there are gaps between the ashes, gaps of places still being intact. But hey, I don't know. <laughs> so this whole conspiracy thing is really interesting. Some of it sounds pretty far-fetched. Some of it is definitely within the realm of possibility. So I'm not just going to completely discount it like that. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to add my own conspiracy. My conspiracy is about Joe Biden because Joe Biden, first he sat here and offered $700 to these people. So you've pledged over a hundred billion dollars to some foreigners in Eastern Europe to where most people can't even point to on a map. You pledged all that money to them. Your own people who voted overwhelmingly for you. Oh, you can get $700 per household. Then FEMA said, okay, we need some more money. So Biden said, okay, we'll go ahead and give $12 billion to Maui for disaster relief. But we're going to tie that to Ukraine. So if we're going to give Maui $12 billion, I want Ukraine to have another $24 billion. And I'm going to put that in the same package. So all you Republicans and all you none neocon and neolibs y'all don't want to give more money to ukraine but how about this if you want money to go to hawaii you better give money to ukraine otherwise that means you don't care about hawaii so we have a lot of republicans let's say marjorie taylor green for example she's definitely against this blank check to ukraine let's stop giving money to all these ukrainians who are just dying anyways so biden said to people like marjorie taylor green look you're going to give this money to ukraine or I'm going to go around and spread the lie that you don't care about Maui because you refuse to get money to Ukraine because I've tied it into one package. Money for Maui means money for Ukraine. Money for Ukraine means money for Maui. So it's either both or neither. <laughs> so Biden is basically playing politics with the people in Hawaii over there. And my conspiracy of, about this is maybe somebody's pushing him to do it. Maybe the powers that be, maybe these developers, maybe BlackRock them, all these billionaires, they want this land grab. They want to force these people in Hawaii to get the hell out anyway. So maybe they're pressuring Biden to minimize support to them, to delay support to them, to increase the pressure, to make it more likely that they're going to sell their properties for pennies on a dollar. Maybe the cabal is behind his own thing. Maybe they're controlling Biden. That's definitely within the realm of possibility. But I don't know. Let me know what you think. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.